So, um, so I'll talk about the what our wins and losses have been for the vaccination effort. And my uh, talk's going to be very similar to the first uh, two ones, where I'll just go over the current situation of COVID-19 in the country, um, and then the 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 processes and how we get the vaccines into our people, which is from the approval to the procurement to the distribution. And then just one slide on our wins and our misses and what lessons we've learned from um, our vaccination program. So this is where we stand right now um, in terms of our infection. So we had a first wave, um, this was about a year ago, uh, and uh, the red line here are the number of cases, while the blue lines are the number of tests that were done. And you can see initially we were trying to ramp up our testing capacity um, uh, as well. Um, and that was our sort of first wave, uh, which ended uh, sometime end of July. And then we had this lull um, until October. Uh, and then after October, um, we experienced a second wave, and that was in the winter. Um, and it was essentially sort of almost like two two waves, like a, a wave and a little wave left after that. Um, uh, and and um, and we sort of tidied over that uh, fairly well, I, I believe. But now we've sort of, um, after again, a little bit of a lull, we've started a second wave, a uh, third wave actually. Um, and this third wave um, uh, seems to be almost as bad as our first one um, was. Now, in many ways, maybe not as bad in the sense that we're more familiar with the disease. We have uh, a lot more capacity now um, that, than we had before uh, before the previous, um, in, in the very first wave. Uh, but nonetheless, this is what our mortality trends look like, starting from the beginning um, until now. And you can see, um, as of um, yesterday, we had um, sort of the highest mortality we've seen um, since this uh, third wave um, has started, since actually the, the, the pandemic has hit the, the country. Um, and, and this is um, sort of the last slide looking at uh, where, we, where we are. And this sort of divides um, people on oxygen, people at home, uh, and people, sorry, people on oxygen, people on low flow oxygen, people on the vent. And you can see um, the number of people on high flow oxygen, that would be somebody um, uh, on, on BiPAP, for example, um, is, is fairly high now um, around the country. And we also are now um, wondering and working towards um, offsetting a potential oxygen um, crisis that, that may develop over here and looking at ways of, of sort of uh, preempting um, and, and saving the oxygen as required. On the other hand, if you look at the, the vaccine status, um, you can see uh, compared to the UK, for example, uh, Pakistan is way at, at the bottom there. And if I just take UK out of here, just so that um, you, know, you can look at our neighbors, um, you can see compared to Bangladesh, um, India, uh, which is about um, and Sri Lanka, Pakistan is still uh, fairly low in the vaccines per 100 people. Um, and we'll go over some of the causes of this and, and what we're doing to, to prevent this. So uh, just, to, just to put things um, sort of in a more organized uh, way, um, uh, the framework or, or the way that uh, I guess a vaccine would eventually reach somebody's arm um, is, uh, is the manufacturing followed by you know, the approval in the country, um, the, the procurement, and then deciding who's going to get it. And then finally, um, making sure um, it gets into that, that particular arm. So, so that's going to be the framework for this talk. And, and we'll go over each of these, these five steps um, and how we've done what we've done and, and where we could maybe do better and what we're doing to improve. So I'm going to skip manufacturing, actually, because we actually don't do any vaccine manufacturing as of now within Pakistan. And that's going to be um, a little later on. Um, but the approval process um, is something that um, is sort of a unique for the vaccines in that um, our version of FDA, or, which is the Drug Regulatory Authority of Pakistan, or, or DRAP, um, actually commissioned a completely independent group, which was made out of um, uh, academics, um, uh, including infectious disease specialists, including uh, public health specialists, um, uh, to do emergency approvals. And this is sort of not only just to speed up the approvals, but also to make the process transparent and independent um, of, of other forces, quote unquote. Um, and as a result, we've had now five vaccines up, approved to date. There's the two inactivated vaccines, Sinopharm and Sinovac. Um, and then we have uh, the CanSino Bio, um, AstraZeneca, and the Sputnik V vaccine. Along with this, we have a special uh, cabinet committee, which is headed by the Minister of Planning and Development, which who also heads um, something called the NCOC, which is um, a committee um, or, or a group um, uh, which involves both um, again, uh, the government and the military um, and also um, uh, academic institutes, um, uh, which is sort of driving or, or, or steer, spearheading the, the, the COVID response in the country. Um, from the vaccine procurement standpoint, um, uh, so about $150 million um, dollars have been, has been set aside. And uh, we, plan, we, or we, we are procuring the, the vaccine through three different channels. The first is 
um, the blue one, which is the bilateral uh, government basis, so you know directly from uh, the different governments. And we hope to um, get about 15 to 25 million people vaccinated through that. Then there's the Gavi, which uh, again Pakistan is also part of, um, uh, and we are hoping to get about 4.45 million people vaccinated through there, um, and then uh, a million people through the private sector um, eventually. And that's sort of the plan, what it is. And this will uh, cover about 60 to 70 million people. And how do we come to the 60 to 70 percent, uh, uh, million person? Is through the simple uh, back of the envelope calculation, where we have a, a population of about 225 million of which uh, 100 million are uh, under 18, just like India, a lot of young population. Uh, for about 25 million, for various reasons, we're not recommending that, that, um, vaccination, either because of uh, um, uh, conditions that would preclude vaccination. Um, and that remains about 60 to 70 million um, uh, people. Uh, the distribution of this vaccine, or who this is going to go to uh, in terms of priority, um, uh, the plan um, is and was to do this in three stages, um, while well, the first stage is sort of divided into two. Uh, stage 1A would be the essential frontline workers, about half a million uh, folks there. And then uh, those over 65, about 9.5 million uh, people. And then stage two, um, we would then cover all healthcare workers and a population of more than uh, 60, which is about 16.8 um, million. That would be about 7 to 8% of the uh, entire population. And then the stage three would be a, a defined proportion of the remainder. Now, this was the original plan, and uh, but this sort of changed um, as uh, as we learned and as we went uh, ahead. And I'll and, and I'll go over what we did um, uh, differently. Finally, um, how did we plan to get these vaccines into the the arms of people? And um, actually, just like um, India um, and just like Egypt, we have our own sort of online database called NIMS, um, uh, and each vaccine is actually tra uh, is tracked through our national ID card. So everybody in Pakistan has a national ID card number um, and each vaccine is tracked um, uh, through this. Um, uh, and, and to help identify these, these three populations that we decided that, that, that I mentioned, um, uh, the ages are already within the Nadra system, within the, the national ID card system. So, so that is already predefined. Um, uh, on the other hand, um, the hospitals were required to send a list of frontline workers um, uh, to, um, uh, to NIMS and, and they will sort of pre-register that way. And briefly, they opened self-registration, which was a little bit of a disaster because a lot of people started registering on this, uh, leading to a really increased sort of um, a rush at these uh, vaccination sites, um, which then had to be sort of um, rethought um, uh, through again. Um, so this is what the, the database looks like. Um, uh, hospitals would send in their, um, their, their frontline healthcare workers. Briefly, we could reg register ourselves. Um, and then you have the ages already from the NADRA, from the National ID card system. Um, and what you do as, as, a, as a person is that you send them a, a message, they give you a code um, if, you're, if you are within this database. Um, and then with, with this code, you can go to any of the vaccine centers and go get your um, vaccine. Um, uh, so, and, and to do this, uh, like every other country, we have these COVID vaccination centers, uh, which were created. And this really is um, remarkable because, you know, we really haven't focused on adult vaccination in, in the past. And our EPI, the, these vaccinations have really been at the pediatricians or in case of polio from door to door. Um, and, and these locations have been in the large uh, private and public hospitals, in function halls, exhibition halls. Um, and we have over 300 to 500 of these uh, CBCs now um, uh, set up. Um, and, and very well-defined uh, SOPs in each of these. And, and this is sort of uh, an example of this, of, of how uh, when you enter um, this, this area, you know, you go to the different areas and, and sort of almost like an like a assembly line, you end up um, at, um, at nine and you, and, and, and you exit. Um, so, so how did we fare? Well, when we did the healthcare vaccination, um, the uptake was actually relatively slow. Um, of the healthcare workers. Um, and there were many reasons of, for this, uh, but mostly uh, this again was related to um, vaccine hesitancy, related to uh, trust and safety, um, which has come up over and over again, I think in the previous talks also. Um, uh, uh, to give an example, there was a Gallup poll looking at, um, you know, who would you get if, you, uh, if a vaccine was available at that moment? And you can see uh, a lot of the healthcare workers wanted Pfizer, um, which was not gonna happen, um, or the first available vaccine. Uh, while the Chinese vaccines, um, which are the ones that are predominantly approved, uh, only a minority of uh, folks really wanted the Chinese vaccines, which we felt was one of the reasons. And then I did the, 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 this, this really quick, um, quick and dirty sort of a, a look at why people within my own institute are not getting the vaccine. And you can see a lot of them are to do with safety um, uh, and, and obviously um, uh, not trusting if the studies have been done and not knowing if the vaccines work or not. 
Um, after the healthy workers, um, after about a month or so, this was expanded to the elderly and initially was only over the age of 70 and then 60 and then 50. And as of yesterday, actually, um, and I didn't and it's not elderly anymore, but uh, people over 40 can also not get the vaccine. And the way that it worked is that, you know, when the vaccines open up for the age of 60, then the age, then 70 year olds didn't really have to pre-register and they could just simply walk into any center and get the vaccine immediately, um, but obviously get into the, the, the database. Um, so, uh, so far, um, uh, just taking stock, we've uh, acquired about 22 million Sinopharm vaccines, um, 60,000 Sino vaccines, and 5.5 million Sinovac vaccines. Uh, while um, AstraZeneca and Sputnik V have been approved, we don't have any of those as yet. Uh, we're about vaccinating 70,000 uh, doses per day, um, and we've gotten about 1.7 million doses um, so far. And this is sort of how the, the daily vaccination has, has gone on. And you can see, you know, you have these peaks and this trough and this peak and a trough. And this is what happens is that, you know, the initial vaccines were the healthcare workers, then it was open up for the 70 and you saw this sort of increase uh, immediate uptake. When it plateaus, then uh, you op we, we open up for the next age group. And then when that plateaued for the next age group and, and, and so on and so forth. Um, uh, and then to make things easier for uh, sort of the elderly who may not be able to come and go, um, you know, the, 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 there, there's home vaccination. Um, there's also a separate vaccination drive for the prisoners and uh, the prisoners have been vaccinated separately uh, because they live in sort of a, a very uh, close uh, area. Um, uh, we are also looking at commercial vaccines um, and this is to offset the, uh, the, the government uh, vaccination. Um, a program and Sputnik V was available briefly uh, and, you know, it, it was really consumed within three days, um, it, it had run out. Um, Kensana Bio um, will be available shortly, uh, but there are issues with this, um, uh, which I'll talk about in, in a second. Um, and actually hospitals are now being approved uh, to provide these vaccines and they've got to go through this whole checklist uh, to make sure that, uh, you know, they, they, they are following all of the SOPs uh, for vaccines. So I'm going to end um, really quickly uh, with, again, uh, the same uh, five uh, components of getting the vaccine, but over uh, what our, our uh, successes are and what we may uh, have been able, or we should have done a little bit better maybe, and what we're going to do about it. Um, so I didn't talk about the vaccine trials, but you know, one of our, our, our hits um, for, the, for the vaccines is that we actually started off with the Cancino Bio vaccine trial. And since then, now we have a number of other trials in the, in the pipeline. And for some of these, actually, the, the companies have actually already spoken to the manufacturers um, and so that the manufacturing of these vaccines could be done um, within, within the country, um, probably by the end of the year. So, so that is sort of something that um, we don't have currently, but uh, hopefully this will um, ramp up by the end of the year. Um, the, the independent approval process actually is, uh, and the rapidity with, with which these are getting approved um, and, the, and the transparency in this um, is actually one of the, the things that uh, work really well. Um, and then by leveraging country ties, especially with China, um, we were able to get our vaccines in much faster than, um, than, than we, we could, uh, because, for example, we still haven't gotten any of the vaccines uh, from COVAX. This national database that was formed is actually really great. Um, and this is the first time, you know, we, we've had this sort of uh, a national database of health, uh, both for COVID and not for the vaccines. And because um, each person who is uh, who tests positive, um, we have their national ID card number. And now we also know who has gotten the, um, the vaccine and their national ID card number. So we're currently looking at matching these two together um, to sort, sort of um, really get a good accurate um, uh, estimation of how well these vaccines are working. And then these, these uh, CVCs or the COVID vaccination site, uh, centers are really uh, very well run um, uh, systems, um, uh, uh, which were really uh, built almost overnight um, uh, to, uh, for, uh, for vaccination. Um, where are we, we lagging behind? So vaccine supply is limited. And remember, we only have sort of four places really to get the vaccine from. There's a U.S. who's not really um, giving vaccines anywhere um, outside um, the U.S., though they may give AstraZeneca soon from what I, I read at BBC just this morning. Um, there is Russia um, from where we got some vaccines, but their capacity is relatively limited. Um, India, we just heard about, um, who are um, already trying to get sort of their own population vaccinated earlier. Um, but hopefully we'll get the copy shield from them um, eventually once, you know, um, the manufacturer ramps up further. And that really only leaves us with, with China. And that's why, um, you know, uh, we, we're very limited in where we can get our vaccines uh, from. Uh, commercial vaccines are in limbo. And the reason they're in limbo is because um, of more bureaucracy as opposed to anything else where, you know, the, the, the drug companies and, 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 and DRAP are not able to come up with a price um, at which to sell it, which would be both equitable uh, but also uh, worthwhile for the drug companies to, um, to bring this in. 
Um, we've had actually very poor uptake in the rural areas. So, but in the urban areas, we've almost had 50% of the, the, the targets met, but the rural areas really have not been able to um, get the vaccines. And you know, now there's special emphasis um, on actually having uh, people go again door to door to do the vaccines in the rural area. Uh, and then uh, vaccine hesitancy is pervasive, and I guess we'll talk about this more um, because I, can, I, I, I sort of feel questions coming from vaccine hesitancy. But to sort of preempt the question, what are we doing to do this, uh, to improve this? Well, you know, there's been a lot of media campaign. Um, maybe this could be uh, Ink Ping's mother uh, further, um, uh, where, you know, um, celebrities and the prime minister, et cetera, are sort of um, on TV getting the vaccine while they, um, uh, you know, to, uh, to sort of bolster uh, support. And then finally, the, um, there have been delays in the system. I'm, I'm done. This is my, I'm actually finished. Okay, thanks very much indeed.